Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Here comes the Spider-Man. But what is the Spider-Man doing in the Supreme Court? Back in 1990, children watched Spider-Man cartoons, and many of them pretended to be Spider-Man. Inventor Kimball developed a toy that enables children to shoot foam spider webs from their gloved hands. The dispute between the inventor and the producer of that toy brought the Spider-Man to the Supreme Court. Kimball vs. Marvel is interesting enough, it's a patent case, but it's not a case about what the patent actually means, but instead it's a case of how the patentee and the uh, licensee can structure their license agreement. Patentee in this case, Mr. Kimball, he invented a particular way of shooting foam for Spider-Man toys and he got a patent on it. While Marvel, of course, produces Spider-Man toys and licenses that patent. And what they agreed is that Marvel will pay uh, Mr. Kimball a percentage of sales for the toys. But even though the patent expires at a certain point, as all patents do, their agreement on royalties had no expiration date. And that ran into a conflict with the current Supreme Court doctrine that states that you cannot uh, structure patent agreements in such a way. The narrow issue is whether or not uh, Berlotta should be overruled and whether patentees and licensees can structure their payments of, uh, in such a way that the royalties would continue to accrue after the patent expires. This case, the Berlotta case, is such an anomaly in terms of patent law and antitrust law. It kind of a, in fact, it's such an anomaly that neither Mr. Kimball nor Marvel actually knew about it before, when they signed the contract. It obviously has broader implications on structures of agreement between patentees and licensees. It's simply the question of how much freedom should patentees and their licensees have to structure their transactions and their licenses. During the oral argument, it was pretty clear that justices do think Berlotti is a weird and odd case. It stands in, apart from all the other antitrust slash patent misuse cases, it relies on an outdated economic theory and just generally is wrongly decided. I think basically almost everyone, possibly with the exception of Justice Breyer, agrees that this was just an incorrectly decided case. At the same time, overruling a precedent, even a wrong one, is just not something justice do lightly. And so I think there was, to the extent there was a tension, it was not so much attention of whether or not Berlotti was right or wrong, but whether the tension is that whether the courts or Congress should take a lead in overruling it. Life is a great big day, wherever there's a hang, you'll find a spider man.